crossing the rocks. In the interior of lithospheric plates, it can come from, for example, simply the loading of the lithosphere by ice. This beach that we're standing on here is at presently at an altitude of about 560 feet above mean sea level. And by radiocarbon dating of marine shells, we estimate that it was formed approximately 6,600 years ago. From radiocarbon dating of twigs and shells from deltas that were built into this uh, post-glacial ocean, we can determine that approximately 4,600 years ago, the ocean had uh, lowered to a level which is just low enough to fill this basin that you see in the distance with the uh, white tents, which are barely visible to the left of that ridge. At that time, the ocean was still approximately 240 feet above sea level. In 4,600 years, the land has rebounded 246 feet or 240 feet until presently the, uh, the sea is approximately 100 miles east of here. The coast of Hudson Bay is emergent, and the best uh, ideas of what is going to happen to Hudson Bay in the future are that it probably will continue to shrink and the land will continue to rise. Glacial rebound producing a warping of the lithosphere is only one example of a broad scale so-called a pyrogenic uplift. The Great Salt Lake, the uh, reduction in the size of the lake has also resulted in broad scale uplift which produces tension in the lithosphere. The rise of the land around the uh, decreasing lake as shown by lake uh, beds on the boundaries of the lake. In mountain belts, the uh, movement is much more compressive, and in the Rockies of the United States, the movement plotted by the constant survey of benchmarks is much greater than in the Salt Lake area. points along a railroad line surveyed many years ago are resurveyed at intervals. And the movement has been found to be quite dramatic. The kind of movement that's associated with uh, the building of mountains in narrow belts where compressive stress, and folds, and thrust faults are very important. Geologically, this is a very, very high rate of uplift. Uplift along the coastline of the United States in the west is quite easily seen in stranded beaches that were previously at sea level and have since arisen. In Los Angeles, in the Long Beach area, shells which were once at sea level on a sea beach are now well above sea level in rural districts. Here is one exposed in a road cut. In the Canadian Rocky Mountains, the effects of compression are visible on a very different kind of scale. Here, the Yamnuska thrust with Cambrian on top of Cretaceous rocks. Very eloquent evidence of extreme compression. And Mount Eisenhower also resting on a thrust plane.
and within the massive beds of limestone there's even a second, somewhat smaller thrust plane traveling diagonally up to the outcrop. Mount Balfour is a, another slab of limestone which has been thrust over younger rocks. Sharp anticlines in the Rocky Mountains are also evidence of extreme compression and distortion of the rock. The Palliser Fold, a very sharp anticline. And on a smaller scale, individual layers in the rock are also deformed in a fashion which is good evidence of compression in the building of this mountain belt. The rather brittle kink brands reflecting a slightly different behavior of rocks to compression. and the layers themselves standing almost vertically. Tension occurs in rocks which are unable to flow and fold, and in these rather thicker layers, the tension cracks are visible as small joints, and the rock breaks away in angular pieces once again reflecting compression and distortion of the rock. And tension has, you remember, separated the fragments of this dike that was unable to flow as it was stressed by the compressive forces on the margins of a fold. Stay tuned for a short public membership break. You can show your support for TV Ontario programming by calling in a financial donation at 483-5555 from within the Toronto dialing region or long distance toll free at 1-800-387-8444. Become a member of TV Ontario. Understanding the Earth has been part of the curriculum at post-secondary institutions in Ontario for many years now. If you've enjoyed watching this series and if you would like to support educational television on... 46, it registered 7.2 on the Richter scale. And uh, just before we actually find out if we're immune in Canada and actually recreate a mini-quake here in the studio, let's watch this report from Kirsten Nielsen as she tells us an overview of earthquakes and why and how they happen. These scenes are from the devastating aftermath of the 